So let's talk about the polypeptides and the Edmund degradation now. So a polypeptide is simply what you get when you combine multiple amino acids together. And the way it works is what you're going to do is you're going to, let's start with these two amino acids here, glycine and lysine. What you're going to do is you're going to look to find your carboxylic acid end on one of your amino acids and your amino group end on the other carboxylic acid. Now, notice lysine has two amino groups, so how do we know which one we're supposed to use? Remember, the basic structure of any amino acid always involves two carbons, one with a carboxylic acid, and right next door, one with an amino group. And those are always going to be the two carbo that is always going to be the carboxylic acid you use and the amino group you use. Okay, so let's say I want to combine glycine and lysine such that it'll read glycine, lysine. Now, in naming conventions, we read these left to right, and when we do that, we say that the N terminus is on the left. N terminus meaning the free NH2 should be on the left side. And on the right, we assume we have the carboxy terminus, meaning the side with the carboxylic acid. So I've already set it up such that that will be the case. The lysine's carboxylic acid is on this side, and the glycine's amino, acid, uh, amino group is on the left side, so there shouldn't be any issue. But if it's an exam question and they give it to you the other way around, you might have to take the molecule and just flip it. Now, what you're going to do to figure out what this looks like is pretty straightforward. What you're going to do is you're going to find the OH group of your carboxy end, that you want to fuse, and you're going to find your NH2 group. What you're going to do is you're going to completely erase that OH group from your carboxy end. You're going to remove one hydrogen from the amino end. And then you're just going to connect the nitrogen to that carboxy terminus. And there you have a peptide bond. So if you remember your carboxylic acid derivatives chapter, what you have right here is an amide. A peptide bond is just a fancy name for an amide bond that connects two carboxylic acids together. No, sorry, two amino acids together. Okay, so let's do the same thing now for the other amino acid I've drawn here, which is uh, glutamate. So once again, what you're going to do is you're going to erase the OH group. You're going to take one hydrogen off of the amino group and again, we know it's this amino group because it's the one that's one carbon away from our carboxylic acid group. And this carboxylic acid group must be our side chain then because we know that this one's right next to our amino group. So, and then I'm just going to connect this carbon to this nitrogen, and there's my other peptide bond. Now, I can shorten these bonds and make things a, lo a little more pleasant, but this is the basic f idea of what you're supposed to do when you have to form a peptide bond. All you're doing is erase the OH of your carboxylic acid, stick the nitrogen from the other amino acid in its place, and remove a hydrogen so everything stays nice and neutral. Now, the next thing that they can ask you in regards to polypeptides is to treat them with a reaction called the Edmund degradation. And the Edmund degradation is really simple. You don't need to know any mechanisms for it. It's just a rule you have to know. So right now, what, rea what uh, polypeptide we have is glycine, lysine, glutamate the C terminus being free on the glutamate, and the N terminus being free on the glycine. Now, the way the Edmund degradation works is you chop off the N terminus amino acid of a polypeptide. So very often the multiple choice question will just say, okay, here is your amino acid's name. What would you get after a single treatment of an Edmund degradation? And so all you have to do is find the answer where the first amino acid has been removed. So in this case, it would be now, lysine glutamine. And if we did a second Edmund degradation, then the lysine would get chopped off. Now, what if they give you the actual polypeptide drawn out and you have to figure it out from there? Well, you have to find your peptide bond. So we already pointed out that this is their peptide bond, but how do we recognize a peptide bond? Once again, we know that the basic structure of an amino acid always involves two carbons, one, two. One carbon has an amino group on it, the other carbon has a carboxylic acid group. Now in this case, since it's a peptide bond, there's no carboxylic acid, but we still see the carbonyl that was formerly a carboxylic acid. So we know that these must be two carbons of an amino group, or an amino acid, which means this next bond over is the bond we know we have to slice off. So that's the bond that's going to get chopped off, lysine's going to leave, and you'd be left with lysine glut uh, glutamate 
as your polypeptide after one admin degradation. If you do this a second time, we're going to chop off the lysine, and then we'd just be left with glutamate. And so once again, you have to find your peptide bond. Well, I see right here, these two carbons right there, one and two, here's my amino group, here's my carbonyl that's left over from the carboxylic acid. So this must be another amino acid separate from this thing. So I'm just going to break that bond, put a hydrogen back on the, N on the end of the amino group, and so here's my amino, my amino acid that's after two uh, Edmund degradations of that polypeptide we started with. It's just going to be glutamate by itself. So, again, if it's a multiple choice question and they just write out the name, then just chop off the leftmost amino acid uh, as many times as they tell you to do an Edmund degradation. So if there are two uh, sequential Edmund degradations, you chop off two N-terminus amino acids. And then you just pick the answer that has what's ever left over now there's one other thing I want to talk about in regards to polypeptides. So let's regenerate those amino bonds that are those uh, peptide bonds that I kind of just erased. Um, so we had that there, NH, and that there. And that is how do we protonate these when we get, are given those pKa versus pH rules again? So um, let's say this is mixed into a pH of 7, because they usually ask about neutral pHs, but they could just as readily ask something higher or lower. Let's keep things simple for now, neutral pH. So, one thing to always remember about pKa versus pH is that when pKa is less than pH, you are going to be, what is it, uh, total brain fart, uh, deprotonated. And when pKa is greater than pH, you will be protonated. And that makes sense because if your pKa is low, that means you're acidic relative to your, what you're dissolved in. So if you're in an acid surrounded in base, what happens to you? You lose your proton. Whereas if your pKa is greater than your pH, now you're more basic than the solution you're dissolved in. So if you're a base surrounded in acid, you'll get protons. Okay. So, once again, I said let's mix this into a pH of 7. Now, I, I mentioned in the previous video about pKa versus pH that they'll typically give you pKa's if they're necessary to solve a problem. Now, for this question, I don't have to give you any pKa's because I've given you a pH of 7. Meaning, well, why do I say that? Because at a pH of 7, there are some rules that every amino acid follows. Namely, in a pH of 7, the carboxylic acid group is always deprotonated. And that's mostly because every carboxylic acid group has a pKa of around 2, which makes sense then, because if a pKa is less than the pH, it should be deprotonated. And then the amino group will always be protonated, because most amino groups have pKa's around 9 to 10, and that makes sense again, because if the pKa is greater than pH, it should be protonated. So just know, regard, you don't have to memorize any pKa's, but you should remember the rule that carboxylic acid will always be deprotonated, and, and the amino group will always be protonated in a neutral pH when we're talking about amino acids. So if that's the case, let's look through this and find all our carboxylic acids, all our amino groups, and protonate and deprotonate accordingly. So right here we have our N-terminus, that should now be NH3 positive because it gets protonated. This NH2 will become an NH3, so the side chain, the car any carboxylic acids or amino groups and side chains follow the same rule as what I just said here. And then I have this carboxylic acid, so that should get deprotonated, and this carboxylic acid, so it should get deprotonated. Now, I've taken care of all the carboxylic acid groups and all the amino groups, but what about the peptide bonds themselves? Because this was formerly a carboxylic acid, and this still kind of looks like an amino group. Don't those get any protons or lose protons? Well, no. The rule is... The nitrogen and carbonyl that are in peptide bonds, uh, uh, sorry, that's, uh -huh. so the nitrogen and carbonyl that are in a peptide bond are never protonated or deprotonated. This is how they will look in every pH you care about. So it's always going to be carbonyl neutral, single bonded to NH neutral. And that only goes for the peptide bond carbonyls and, and amino groups, because we've seen the ones that are sticking out on the end definitely have things changing. That's a bit. That's pretty much it. You need to know about 
uh, amino acids and their and uh, how they work in polypeptides.